Hi, and welcome to another episode of Straight Out of Camera, proudly sponsored by Fujifilm South Africa. Joining me live in studio today is Managing Director of TechSmart.co.za, Mike Hubert. Mike, how are you doing? Wesley, how are you? I'm very well, man. And in Cape Town, commercial photographer Leon Westerson. How's it, Leon? Hi, Leon. All good. This side, chat to you again. So, Leon, today we're chatting about fine art photography and specifically in sort of artistic nudes. Um, looking at fine art, pho- fine art photography, um, what is your um, way you would conceptualize an artistic nude in that genre? Uh, well, conceptualizing it means that you, you don't uh, connect the nudity to the person, but uh, you, you pose questions about what that means, or, or otherwise, from the other angle, stripping away clothes, making it less contemporary and more timeless, and it speaks to, um, to, to people across cultures, across times, and, and that's the big, big differentiation. So if that's your platform, then you can start to build some meaning about how you pose the nude, or where, where the nude is situated, is there contact, uh, is there sort of like a, a relationship between the viewer and the subject, um, or is it a more generic thing that hit on some mythological uh, or contemporary views about uh, personhood and okay, that's, that's where that conversation starts. So, so when you start uh, working on, um, on nude forms in fine art, uh, you, you potentially walk into a, a minefield depending on who the audience is, number one, and number two, um, what kind of, what kind of uh, topics you're addressing. So some, some cultures find uh, nudity more offensive than others, and obviously others less so. Um, that's been traditionally the case where people are more or less comfortable with um, being without clothes and maybe identifying that there's uh, shame or something with it. So you might expect <clears throat> expect kickback from um, some some circles depending on how you choose to uh, approach this whole t- subject of possibly taboo nudity. Um, but then in the autistic circles, uh, male and female nudes have um, long been part of the story because um, it, it's a vehicle for some allegories and mythology and obviously also addressing uh, certain certain subjects that you cannot do with, let's say, still life um, of oranges and apples. So you have an idea that um, you want to depict a certain um, subject, but you want to do it in an artistic nude fashion. Um, is there specific sort of photography um, ways that you would do it? Would you shoot it wide? Would you would you work on black and white? What what would be the, the sort of um, approach you need to take when shooting this sort of genre? Um, I think it's the same. If you, if you, if you look at nudes being different from the rest of art, I think that's, that's maybe a bit of a pitfall. Um, in the same way that one shouldn't look at photography in a different way than you would, at, uh, than you would look at oil paintings. Uh, it, it, when you're creating an artwork, it's the medium in which you create it that, that is your easiest language in which you speak. Um, after that, when you decide on the treatment, obviously shooting in monochrome or uh, slightly turning down the colors or tweaking it and even compositing, um, shooting wide, shooting close, uh, those kind of things um, help to, to, to shape the narrative um, and your theme. Obviously, uh, you, you don't go out to make a single shot. When you have when you develop uh, a theme as an artist, you play around and you, you almost uh, pick a toolbox. So let's say you, you want to actually uh, make something devoid of color. That means that whatever the popular colors at the moment are, you won't be... Uh, impeding what people read into the image if it's not part of the if it's not part of the narrative. Um, I, I prefer to make things mostly in monochrome at the moment with very subdued colors, purely because uh, I think colors could be quite distracting unless they have a very particular purpose, and then then that is a very different thing altogether. Mike, um, how receptive do you think the South African um, market, photography market, are, or the, the the people viewing these images to to artistic nudes? Well, I think from a fine art perspective, very. Um, we've always seen uh, some uh, really decent uh, nude photography coming from South African photographers. I, I remember that series that was shot in the desert. I can't remember the photographer's name. Um, done with uh, skulls of animals and uh, that did very, very well. Um, one of the uh, people that we're going to talk to today is called uh, George Holloway. 
And uh, the, the project that he does with Peter Primich, the photographer, explores male nudity. Now, that is something completely different, I think, in, in, in the South African context. Um, I think we are still um, slightly, I won't say concerned about the male uh, image, but it's something that's not as frequently seen, perhaps, mm. in the culture mm. as the female nude. Brandlive.co.za in your face, all over the place. Boyer Online, 24-7, 24-7. You're listening to the hottest internet station. Grand Live. No doubt. <laughs> Have you ever thought about the power of social media? Social media has the power to make your business grow. Grow! Why don't you let us manage your social media? Because our business is to see your business grow. Visit us at www.beastownmedia.co.za After leaving school, Peter Primich st- studied industrial design at Wits Technikon, where to his delight one of his subjects was photography. Inspired by his lecturer Tim Hodgson, Peter worked as a photographer for Paratus, the South African Defence Force magazine. Once he started working as a designer, he continued with photography, mainly in a work-related capacity. Of his work, Peter says, being a designer has definitely influenced the way I approach photography in the way in which I compose images while trying to tell a story through them. And also joining us in the studio is George Holloway, a sculptor, builder, and I would say explorer. Um, together they work on a number of fine art projects. And um, to talk about choosing projects, uh, welcome to the studio, Peter and George. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Let's start off with you, Peter. Yes. You seem to be a man of many, many interests. Um, you've done books. Uh, you're doing these fine art projects. Um, you're also doing industrial design. How do you go about choosing your specific projects? Uh, not, I don't necessarily choose them. Sometimes they choose me. So in the case of George, it was also a conversation we had. I'd been around to photograph him in his studio, and he spoke to a couple of photographers in a artist sort of walkabout. And he said he mentioned the project that he want what he wanted to do, and said, "Would you be interested in photographing me?" Um, nude, which I was taken aback at, and it, um, I thought it, it sounded interesting, but I thought to myself, well, how am I going to approach this? I don't want to do some gay porn. I, I wanted to do something interesting, and it, it took me about six months to get my head around photographing another male nude and trying to create something interesting out of the image. And one day, George and I bumped into each other at, the coffee, at a coffee shop. And we started chatting. I said, by the way, I've thought about the project and I know what I want to shoot. I know how I want to shoot it. And then George said, well, are you free this weekend? And literally we shot the, shot the first set of images that weekend. And the following Friday, they were on exhibition, on a final exhibition at Art It Is. Wow. Yeah, it was really quick. Shoot, yeah. print, and the next week it was on an exhibition. But George, this uh, this new project seems to be a lot driven by you. I mean, you've been exploring this. Um, we've talked a little bit beforehand, uh, talking about exploring male sexuality, um, the feminine aspect, uh, your role in the patriarchy, for example. Yeah. How long have you been doing this now, kind of heading in that direction? Uh, my sculptural work started quite late in my career. I studied art and then got married during my art studies and had to go out and work for a couple of years <clears throat> and returned to making art, I guess, wow, uh, about 10 years after studying art and uh, began with sculpture and I, and I began with sculpting the male figure because I thought I know myself as a man well, I'll start there. And uh, the subject came up of, of looking at patriarchy, looking at my experience in life, looking at the, the tensions that I go through in sculpture um, and... <coughs> Sorry. Um, then about four years ago, I, I conceived this idea to to begin to 
give a voice to the, the female experience of maleness, make myself available as a male body, a, an object. I refer to myself as an object, like a medium in artwork, like clay is used to make sculpture or oil paint is used to make a painting. I am the material with which the photographer, which I intended to be female from the beginning, expresses her view of, of maleness. Um, it took about three years before the first photographer took me on. Um, Ginny Gualdi, she's a photographer I've worked with now for almost two years. And she has taken me through an interesting journey uh, where she expresses her experience. So she imposes her experience on me. And I, in my brief, uh, opened wide up. The, the photographer chooses the location, the concept, and everything that's involved. I just make myself available and I go through whatever they take me through. Peter, just a quick question. Um, we've learned that you, you actually shot for uh, the National Defense Force magazine. Um, where did your passion for photography start, number one? And then secondly, um, the approach with George, how to not make it seem like just another nude image, but rather have that sort of fine art classical feel. Okay, well, my interest in photography started when I was in junior school. We, they had a photographic club at the school. And one of the teachers, I still remember, had a very old Canon FTB, which I lusted after for years. And then when I studied in design with, uh, with Tim Hodgson, he was an advertising photographer. So um, I absolutely fell in love with photography. I almost left design to do photography. <coughs> but it was very much commercials-based. So it was product photography, that kind of conceptual stuff, more hard-edged than art, and, and which is a little softer. And then after that, I was fortunate when I was in the, doing my national service to be able to work as a photographer. But that was, again, photojournalism. That wasn't, there was no art there. There was get the general's face in focus, <laughs> do this parade ground, get that helicopter in, that kind of stuff. I really had some fun experiences with that. And then after that, you know, as a designer working, I found a lot of photographers send you images, but they're not... They're photographs, but they're not designed to work with a design. So if you talk, you say a photograph and you need to put copy on a page, there is, they haven't allowed space, they've cropped too tight. So it looks nice as a picture, but it doesn't work as a layout. So then I started using my photography and shooting stuff for my own work so that I knew when I was taking the photograph, I would allow space for text. I knew I'd be using portrait or landscape and plan the shots up front and compose it for that. And then, yeah, years of working... For clients, so you always have a brief. So through a change in life, uh, friends of mine and other ceramicists that I'd studied with, her and her husband, he was in advertising and they had started doing uh, fine art projects for themselves. They were, he was doing char started again as an adult, kind of in the middle of your career, started doing charcoal drawings again, not advertising, and she was doing ceramics. And it inspired me. I thought, what the hell am I doing? And I'm just doing stuff for other people. Why do I need to think about what I want to do. So I took up ceramics actually for about six months and I really, really struggled because there's no brief. With fine art, there's no brief. So it was kind of like I said to her, you know, tell me what to make and I'll make it. Mm. <laughs> you know, but what do you want to make? No, it's not what I'm, you know, it's not what I'm telling you. You must come up with it and I, I battled with it. So this whole process kind of coming back to photography, I couldn't deal with the mess of mud. So then I went back to photography again and started photographing Art Deco buildings, which I've always had an interest in, with a friend around town. And he was shooting film, and I switched to digital by that point. So oh. we'd both shoot, and it was really interesting coming back after the shoot, and he'd process his slides. And I'd look at my digital files, and we'd been to photograph the same building, and they were completely different. Oh. The kind of vision that you each have and what you're trying to get out of it is completely different. So then when I met George and spoke to him and started photographing him as an artist in his studio, and he spoke to me about this project, I then wanted to show something about him as a man, not him as a human being, a person, and also like the generic man. What does it mean to be a man? After speaking to him about his project. So looking at it, obviously I'm not a woman. I can't look at it from a woman's perspective. I haven't um, been through what they've been through, dating men, abusive men, you know, all those kinds of issues that are, topical today mm. so i looked at it from a male perspective so for me a man is is portrayed as a kind of two-dimensional cut out aggressive rude harsh brash but to me there's also a softer side where there's you're a little boy and often a guy that's a husband is scared and maybe acts like a fool 
and aggressively, but he's actually insecure. He's, he's supposed to lead his family, but he maybe he doesn't know what he's going to do, how he's going to provide for them. He's going to be a, a role model to his children. And he himself is a little child. So I try to portray all these different dimensions of what it means to be a child, a boy, a father, a son, a husband, a worker, all these kind of aspects. So that was the original part of the fine art series that I did with George, but the things progressing beyond that into other areas. So that was the original idea for this fine art series. Um, tell me, the, the fine art series is really awesome, and at the moment uh, it's obviously um, sculptural. Um, no, it's photographic. Is it, oh, it's both photographic. All right. Yes. So, so it's totally different from the images that I'm seeing on your website, which is holloway.co.za. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Those are my sculptural images, but um, I am looking forward to to incorporate the, the two in, in individual projects as I find people who want to work with that. Um, but yeah, the, 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 the sculptural project is my, my practice. <clears throat> the photographic project is more my conceptual work and it, oh. it, it intersects with my life quite, quite intensely. And you don't, you don't um, at the moment um, see them side by side, they, so it's sort of like clear cut, separate, separate uh, spaces. Yes. Yes, at the moment. But I, I do visualize them, them, them um, working towards each other. So making sculptural elements that are, that are used as props in the photographic project. And then the process of making the, the, the metal elements and the, the behind the scenes. And, and, and there's, there's much more, a broader conversation can happen around that at that stage. But at the moment, I'm busy slowly moving the two streams together. But they are quite distinct at the moment, yes. Peter, talking about um, some of the conceptual work behind these photos, um, it does seem like there's quite a, a little bit of th uh, thinking um, when working alongside George. Do you work together to come up with a concept, or is it kind of like in the flow? How does it work? Well, initially, uh, George just gave me the brief of he wanted to be depicted as a man, and then I came up with the ideas of the different types of you want to call it roles that a man plays. But things are kind of changing so it's almost becoming documentary at the moment so um, obviously I've known George for a while and we actually bumped into each other my wife was doing land art at Emmer and Shadam and George happened to have the spot right next to her so I went to go visit her with my daughter while she was doing her art and we got chatting and then there was a walkabout at the end of the, the land art and we started chatting and then we I don't know how have kept bumping into each other and started chatting about this. So over this period of this project, I've gotten to know George pretty well and spent a lot of time together discussing personal issues about what it is to be a man, what kind of relationship issues you go through. So at the moment, it's it's almost becoming documentary. So the latest shots that I've taken are, are quite personal, I think, to George. And uh, the most recent one, he did a tattoo uh, that George had done in Melbourne, up, in fact, just up the road. And documented that, which turned out, I think, really nicely. And I must say that uh, 16 mil lens is my baby. It is <laughs> unbelievable. Absolutely love it. Yeah, I love wide angles, but that, that one is exceptional. So documented that, and uh, I think the images turned out really well. Anything when you um, when you make your images into an artistic expression, obviously it's it's not just a digital display. I mean, printing is integral into uh, making make an object that somebody can take home and put on their walls. Yes. Um, would you maybe d chat a little bit about um, that process from from taking something digital and making making a form out of it, expressed in that? Okay, so uh, photography as art is, is kind of new, and I think it's important for people to just get a, get a grasp of the medium that's less important than, than, than presenting something that you have. I, I get what you're saying. I, I, you know, the, the photographs are largely, shall I say, almost black and white, not quite completely black and white. I try to give them an old sort of hand-painted look, sort of turn-of-the-century kind of photography, so it's got an old feel. The color kind of distracts from me. Like with this project, uh, George is in virtually every image naked. And the, the thing is, where I've shot with each of the shots I've shot – all of the images with him clothed and unclothed and the minute there's clothing involved it becomes about the clothes and what the clothes mean so when you strip all of that away that it's just him and his skin 
that you're not looking at his watch to see, you know, where does he fit in society or his shoes or his pants or where does his shirt, is it fashionable, is it not fashionable? Does it say he's an artist? Does it say he's a hippie? Does he say he's a businessman? None of those questions come into it. It becomes about absolutely personal. So the other thing with the fine art, with, for me, with the photography with George, is capturing the emotion in his eyes, which is a very small part of your body. But the emotion that you have to, the, for me, that, that is critical to capture is the way I can see him looking at me. So I know when we did the first exhibition and we print the images, so it's one thing seeing it on the back of the, sc the LCD when you've taken the shot, you look at it on your phone, you look at it on your computer screen, but there the maximum you're looking at is about 27 inches. So, But for this exhibition, the prints were made were about a meter high to one and a half meters, and that just takes on another scale. And working with the printers, fine art printers uh, at Silvertone, guys are really great. The quality of, of attention to detail and working with them to get the right kind of res out of it and the right feel. And seeing them that size, it absolutely blew me away when... It just takes on a completely different meaning when it's that big. And when George saw it in the studio, I think he felt the impact because he hadn't seen the images. He'd only seen them on his phone. And then when they hung in the gallery, it took on something else. So he'll have to, he'll have to discuss that with you, <laughs> tell you about his feelings. Yeah, when I <clears throat> walked into the gallery, and there were, it was a long rectangular gallery and Peter's shots on the one side in black and white and Jeannie's shots on the other side in color. And I was horrified because uh, there was me in my full naked glory and I wasn't ready for it. And I just thought uh, it was a... I'm a bit nervous because the male, the naked male image is still a little bit of a taboo. We're all used to seeing women in stages of undress in advertising and everywhere in media. Um, but in time, I, 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 before the exhibition opened, by the time the exhibition opened, I dealt with it and I was okay. Um, and then the, the, the texture of... You can you can zoom in, but I mean by approaching the image, you can look at a fold in the fabric or a, or a, or a, or hair on my head, or or like Peter says, the eyes or the hand or posture, and um, really see so much more than than the natural eye can see. And our eyes tend to our eyes tend to generalize, and that the photograph just brought up detail. And um, yeah, it was a it was a very very powerful experience. I thought it was a bit it was a very strong first statement. As Peter said, there was a lot of, of, of explicit nudity. Um, but we, uh, for me, this is a lifetime project. Um, I would like to do this. I've got my last shot already um, conceived when I lie on the slab. Someone has to come in and take the picture and just say the end. Um, so it's be a documentation of my life. And uh, this is a very bold beginning, which was, it was two years, no, no, a year and a half ago. Yeah. So um, I would hope from my side as the as the initiator or the perpetrator of this project to to conceive of a few more um, conceptual showings of work over the next few years and then and then into the relationship with each photographer as as, as Peter said the, the the initial shoot I, I want to give all control to the photographer and then if we work together again it becomes a more relational thing and now in terms of concept now and then I come back to Peter I show my image I said Peter I saw this can we play with that and it depends on Peter's uh, stylistic preference, whether he goes with it or, or interprets it in another way. Or to, we did a beautiful shot, a Pieta shot, with my daughter, me lying in my daughter's mm. lap, which hasn't quite been processed yet. But that, that for me was quite a strong thing because it's also interesting. My daughter, who lives in Johannesburg now, is married. <clears throat> uh, it's a very strong personality in our family. And so myself lying on her lap, her holding me, her supporting me, was quite an interesting social a comment inside our family. Um, yeah, so so it, it 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 after the first shoot, if if there's an ongoing relationship, it becomes a a more collaborative process, I believe. Yeah, Peter, just um, two questions: one for you and one for George. <clears throat> With regards to your images, where George is the subject, there's a, it's it's shot very wide. Is that a deliberate attempt? Are you got information in the background, not just the subject being George? Um, from all your images that I've seen so far, there's, it's it's wider than normal perspective. You're not zooming in on him himself. There's additional information in the background. Yes, there's, there's a, the background is there to give context to George. So I'm showing him, because the, the places that I've shot him, I've shot him in his studio where he works, mm -hmm. showing his sculptures and the initial images. But I wouldn't say it's exceptionally wide. I mean, the initial shots were shot at a, probably about a 70 mil focal length. Okay. The most recent was at the 16. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking 16. That's yeah, exceptionally wide for me. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm a wide angle junkie. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and that lens just speaks to me. I mean, I can't wait for that 18, 8 to 16. Yeah. But, and that's, um, despite it being so wide, you know, normally the depth of field on the wide angle just puts everything in focus so there's no focal point. You know, everything's in focus yeah. so it's, it, there's no kind of artistic uh, focal point that you choose and you choose what you want to be sharp and let the other stuff happen. Yeah. So that that lens is that that's the reason I really like that lens. So when I shot George, it's not a, typically a portrait lens, but mm. I'd, I'd used it in a way I think that in, that brought out the portrait capabilities of a, of, an, of an ultra wide. Agreed, agreed. And then George, um, we saw an image of you um, in a dress. Um, I, what I've understood is that you live in Joburg CBD. So being able to walk the streets um, when that shot was taken, how was that receptive? receptive by the, the crowd that was maybe walking past. Okay, no, it wasn't in the street. I was in a particular venue. Uh, they walked in, I changed, and I was done. Okay. Um, it, it is a... Oh, the photographic pro project has taken on a documentary quality in my life as well. So uh, through various stages and changes I went through in my life, PDA has documented, and the, this wearing of the dress is the, last, is the last stage. So I would like to go as an absolutely male, 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 male uh, into a shopping center, into, into the streets uh, and just perceive the experience. I went, I was at a, at a, at a birthday party of a, a sculptor, um, Sandile Khadebe, in our, in our complex where I live, went across to my place, came back in the dress and not one person, hip hop artist, graffiti artist, which I expected some reaction, no, no one reacted. They just picked up the conversation where we left off. So um, it's, for me, that is a, a life exploration of my own, which plays off the photographic uh, stimulus and, 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 and develops. And, yeah. But George, you remember the first ones you took of you in Mabining, where there's the kudu and the, the graffiti of oh, the yeah, kudu yeah. in the background. And so we shot that in winter. I mean, I take my head off to George that he was prepared to get undressed in the, in the cold of winter yeah. before sunrise and skateboard up and down the road about 60 times. For me, and uh, the security guards in that area, I mean, it's a pretty, do pretty dodgy area. So mm. on, early on a Sunday morning, the walkie-talkies were going, <laughs> and these little heads were popping out of the various buildings looking at these odd white takes. What the hell are they doing? <laughs> and, but no one uh, confronted us. I mean, we were left alone, yeah. got, the, got the images done. So, But with time, we've also, the, when, for me, when you photograph people, it takes a little bit of time for them to relax and you to see, connect in their eyes. Mm when you're looking at them and, and them looking at you, that you can get when that, um, that right moment is to press the shutter. So that time period from our first shoot is it's almost immediate now. I mean, I'm absolutely comfortable with George. So we literally go somewhere. He'll remove his clothes and get into the kind of poses and I'll direct the posing and George also moves around as well. And we're done really quickly. I mean, mm -hmm. generally about 15, 20 minutes and okay. done. George. Thinking about this project, you've been going through this process now for a long while, and it's very much, as much as it's an artistic project, it's also a thing about exploring yourself. What have you learned through this whole period? Well, that's another half an hour. Um, <clears throat> I have, one of my motivations was to see myself as I'm seen from outside. Um, so that has been very interesting. Uh, it's been quite, quite a healing, quite a, quite a building, quite a, a peculiar thing is that I find a tremendous, uh, restoration or strengthening of my masculinity. Whereas initially I tried to express a feminist idea or support, uh, the female experience of men, which as we mentioned, just is often quite negative. So, uh, and Peter's influence uh, in looking at me as as a man, portraying me as a man, it, it's both personal, also impersonal, because I'm also, I represent generic man. I hope that every man and woman, child, grandmother, f grandfather, can see something in that image of themselves. So, I, um, but but it, it's brought me back to myself in a, in a tremendous way. And it's, it's, it's opened up a strength in my masculinity, which doesn't mean bolshy, aggressive, wild, random maleness. Uh, sometimes silence is the strength. Listening is the strength. But uh, yeah, tremendous self-respect. It was a tremendous, it was a tremendous, in, in, tremendous personal journey for me 
to go through the project. I initiated four years ago with no knowledge of what I know now. Um, and as I've gone through it, I'm learning. And I'm always, till the very end, I am asking questions and the answers are coming through the images through the photographer. So I'm using an outside person. In, in effect, actually, the, the, the photographer is the artist. I am just the subject, or I, I refer to myself as an object. I, it's a bit of a word I've got to work out still. I am just a male body. Um, and I look at the image with the same intrigue as the photographer does at the end. So I don't control the process. I, I voluntarily go along with it. Yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's an element of reversing roles because we are used to the woman being objectified. Um, yeah, but but I'm not I'm not I'm not starting out with a thesis. I'm not starting out to prove a point. I'm starting out with a big question. And essentially, the question is, who am I? But I want to I want to make my search uh, valuable to anyone else who looks at the images. So any any person who is a male or is in relationship or in a friendship or in in any contact with men. I hope can look at the images and answer or ask and answer their own questions. Well, it's also the project has made me re look at myself as a man. You know, like when you look at these images and Jeannie's ones were quite confrontational yeah. and quite aggressive in a way. And it kind of made me look inward as well and reflect upon, you know, how do you behave? How do I behave? Mm. You know, what do women, is this how women really see men? You know, that's, that's been quite a, a thing for me as well to so it's not just a, a photograph but there's personal stuff that hits you as well and gives you pause you know to reflect is there any planned um, exhibitions that's coming up this year for this project we would love one we want to do one in pretoria and one in cape town we're looking for a gallery that will house the work it's obviously it's a difficult one to have you're on the street front to have male nudity but we have some images that are not revealing that we could possibly use in a gallery that might, not, you know, some people are offended and need to be warned if you're too sensitive and maybe it's not for you. But uh, the thing is, it's not about the nudity. It's about George's eyes and what the image reflects. Mm. So, I mean, I have a few of the images at home and my daughter's eight. And, you know, she looked at it and that was it. She didn't never, never even comment on it. Mm. You know, it doesn't even, it's a picture of George. You know, that's it. It's, mm. not, a, it's not about nudity. It's not... It's not a sexualized image. I'm quite interested in pursuing an exhibition uh, in the next year where I would like to get eight plus, more or less, eight women to photo of me. So there is the element of a central male, but yet the power is in the hands of a group of women. Um, so for me, conceptually, that'll be a, the exhibition itself will be expressing a concept. Mm. Uh, of here I am a man, a man traditionally if I you know in, in I mean things are all shifting now socially in, in, in the world so Africa's a bit behind possibly but traditionally the man was in power and now I am submitting myself to a group of women photographing me and I hope for there to be a dynamic coming out of that that will um, go further I really would like to and I was a bit disappointed on the first exhibition for the be to be a lot of discussion a lot of a lot of um Argument. I'd love a couple to stand in front of the work and argue, and and and, and take the conversation home and carry on with it. Um, it doesn't have to involve me. It just I'd like to open the dialogue from the male as well as the female point of view. Because uh, yeah, as I say, with a with a female nudity or semi nudity in, in the media, it's been a norm, and it's not an exhibitionist thing. It's it's a, it's a thing of a vulnerability, and I would like to create this the uh, space where. Everyone who, who engages has an opinion. Be, I'd love someone to say, I absolutely hate it. Then we can talk. If someone says, mm, nice, thank you, uh, that's nothing. We can't work with that. So I, I, I'd rather would like uh, confrontation and, and moving a person's ideas about where they are, where they are in relation to the opposite sex uh, and society than just, okay, we've seen this very nice, thank you very much, goodbye. Okay, so I'm a bit of a, I'm a bit of a activist in a very quiet way. So obviously, um, I've, I've heard some behind the scenes discussions about the differences between Cape Town and Joburg. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what Cape Town has is um, a new fine art uh, museum called the Zaitsmoka, 
um, and it's for all of Africa stuff. So uh, walking around there the other day with my daughters um, and the kind of questions that they had, uh, nudity didn't seem to be any of the, the major themes for them. Uh, that they had a lot of questions about why somebody would make something and where it would fit in and, uh, and what the context is. Uh, are you perhaps planning on um, doing something down here in Cape Town um, and, and moving something down here so that we can see what you're all about as well? Yeah, Leon, definitely. We're actively looking for a gallery that that we can host, uh, but it might need some personal time to go down there and visit galleries and show them some of the work before we can get a definite date and a mm -hmm. space. I'm quite interested because I grew up in Stellenbosch, uh, which is nearby, and uh, it would be very interesting to to pop down with a body of work and see the reception um, after seeing it in Johannesburg. And... Um, yeah, I, I believe that Captain might be a bit more of a receptive audience and a bit more communicative about about the the context of the exhibition. But um, it would be very important to to do a bit of a media campaign along with it to invite people to communicate to interact. Thank you very much for joining us today in studio, uh, Peter. Where can we find you on the internet? Um, probably just on Facebook. I don't have a dedicated page to the photography, so it's Peter Primich on Facebook and. Uh, the pic my pictures that I that I show in the public space are, are not everything I shoot. So mm. The stuff that's for clients and for work is obviously confidential for them. Yeah. Uh, so it's my personal stuff that's on uh, in my photographic personal page. Awesome. And George, where can we find you? Oh dear. I have a presence as a sculptor. So I've got a website www.holloway.co.za that shows some of my work over the last few years. Uh, the photographic work because of the nudity is a, is a problem. Too. We're going to have to work on something, on a, a location where we can show that. Uh, Peter occasionally shows on, on, on dedicated photography, photography groups and, and so on. Um, yeah, but that's, okay. that's me. Follow us on SOOC underscore live, both on Facebook and on Instagram, where we will have examples of the images that Peter has taken of George. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Good.